Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic and the date today is Friday, March 29th, 2024. That means it's the 89th day of ranking my favorite video games through each day of the year. Coming in at number 278 is Multiversus. Multiversus is Warner Brothers' response to the Smash Brothers franchise, and I have to admit, it's a really good entry into the platformer fighting genre. Before I dive further into this, I need to mention the weird release year listed in the title of the video, which will also explain some of what you're going to see, or more importantly, not see throughout. The game went into beta in 2022, and that's when I first got my hands on it. Currently, the beta servers are offline as they put the final touches on it for its full release on May 28th of this year, so happy birthday to me, I guess. In the meantime, I can't show off any online functions of the game, and the only play I can do is local multiplayer, which I don't have enough controllers to properly do with my PC, or practice play against computers in the lab, which is basically just an endless, adjustable practice room. Being a Warner Brothers game, you have access to characters from a large amount of their properties, ranging from DC Comics, to Scooby-Doo, to Game of Thrones, to NBA superstar LeBron James. There's also a couple of original characters in the game, like the adorable Rain Dog. The game has arcade-style fighting mechanics with an emphasis on platforming levels, many of which feature cool, destructible terrain. The moveset on many of the characters are pretty flavorful to those characters, although in the time I've spent with the game, I've mostly played Shaggy, Superman, and LeBron. Hilariously, Shaggy's built almost entirely around the Ultra Instinct Shaggy meme, and you can charge him up to go Super Saiyan, putting on the real hurt. One last thing before we get into the finer details. I am not a competitive fighting game player. I play these things for silly, beat face, casual fun. That being said, I do have an appreciation for the minute details that make the competitive fighting games interesting. It might help some people to know where my background is with this and where I'm coming from for the rest of the video. Movement of the game is extremely responsive, although perhaps at times just slightly too floaty for my liking. One incredibly important thing is the way the dodge mechanic works. Hold down the movement for one direction and tap the dodge button to get the briefest of windows to become invulnerable and slide through everything near you. Dodging in this game feels great, and it's one of the biggest things that separates it from Smash Bros and feel, at least to me. Another thing that separates it is the difference in light and heavy attacks. While the distinction between the two is nothing new or special, you'd get diminishing returns from your attacks if you keep using the same moves over and over, so you're heavily incentivized to mix it up throughout the game. Competitive play in Multiversus is balanced around two-player teams. Unlike in most fighting games, there's even dedicated support characters that can heal, reposition enemies and allies, and provide other benefits beyond just ways to do damage. You can also slightly customize your loadout beyond just picking characters. There's talents and special skills you can equip to your character, many of which extend to your whole team. While most of them don't stack with your teammate, there is a secondary bonus that you'll get if you both pick the same talent, leaving lots of opportunities for creative team compositions. I've never gotten especially into the esports side of fighting games, but I am definitely down to watch some good team play for Multiversus, and I'm eager to see where it goes after the full release in May. Now, I've said a lot of pretty nice things about this game, so why is it the worst ranked fighting game on my list? There's two major reasons. First, with all of its bells and whistles, I feel like the min-max potential is great for competitive play in esports, but I already mentioned at the top of the video that those aren't why I play fighting games. I'll typically stick to something a bit simpler. In Smash, for example, I'm one of those people that not only likes having items, I want to go into the custom settings and increase the rate they show up. The second reason is that despite the huge variety of the cast and the really flavorful design of their abilities, the toolkit of most characters feels pretty samey other than those like support role ones. Maybe I just haven't played enough of the game to properly feel out all the differences and I'll happily admit I'm wrong if that's the case. Regardless of those complaints, I think the future looks bright for Multiversus and I'd absolutely love to come back in a year or two and make fun of myself for how wrong I was for putting it in March. Join me tomorrow as I talk about the 277th game on my list where I do in fact own a phone. <laughs> 